I'm super excited for this video because we've got our hands on Cobb's new flex fuel kit for the VBWX, and we're gonna be showing you a step-by-step -step installation. But we've also got Cobb's intake and their new front mount intercooler, and all these parts are gonna be going on our WX. First things first, let's talk about why you'd want to install flex fuel on your Dubber X. Well, you're going to pick up a lot of easy horsepower. This is a true bolt-on kit, so it's completely reversible, and you're going to see power gains somewhere between 60 and 80 horsepower. Normally, you have to spend a ton of time and money modifying your car to get that type of power gain, but with flex fuel, it's that easy. One thing to note about installing the Cobb Flex Fuel Kit is you are gonna have to have an access port. So if you don't already have one of these, I'd highly recommend you pick one up before you order your Flex Fuel Kit. They have an off the shelf tune, but if you prefer, you can also run a pro tune. The FA24 is a direct injection engine, so it has both a high and a low pressure fuel pump. However, from the factory, we only have sensor data on the high pressure fuel pump which is why Cobb has included a low pressure fuel sensor in their kit. They also provide a billet aluminum inline adapter, a pass-through module, and an ethanol content sensor, a fuel pressure harness, and a couple different fuel lines. You've got your CAN gateway module, and you've got your CAN gateway module mounting bracket. So everything you see here is what you're gonna get in the kit. And now you know a little bit more about it, let's go ahead and get it installed in the car. So this is Ethan, he's gonna be helping out with the installation today. Ethan, what's the first thing we gotta to do to install this ethanol kit? Yeah, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the intercooler to give us some room to work in the engine bay. And once we're done in the engine bay, we're gonna move on to the inside of the vehicle. Okay, so as you saw, we removed the top mount intercooler and the AOS to give us clear access to the firewall, which is where we're gonna install the ethanol content sensor. But before we can get that into the car, we've got a couple things we gotta prep first. Start by applying some thread sealer to the low pressure fuel sensor, and then use a 22 millimeter wrench to tighten it into the adapter. Next, attach the ethanol content sensor to the bracket using the two M4 screws and tighten it with a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Now we can install the CAN gateway module onto the bracket and secure it using a 10 millimeter socket. Remove the cap and plug in the ethanol content sensor harness to the gateway module. Attach the other end to the ethanol content sensor and secure everything with a zip tie. On the passenger side of the engine bay, locate the fuel line underneath of the AC hard line and disconnect it. Use a flathead screwdriver to release the blue clip and repeat this process on the fuel line that attaches near the intake manifold. Careful, there may be some fuel in here, so make sure you use a reg so that you don't make a mess. Once everything is unplugged, you can remove the stock fuel line. Locate the two black stud extenders that Cobb provides and install them on your firewall, making sure that they're tight. So we got everything assembled onto the bracket, now we're going to put it in the car. Locate the two flange nuts and use a 10 millimeter wrench to secure them. Locate the fuel line with the two 90 degree fittings on it and the smaller end will be installed on the factory fuel feed line and the larger opening side will go on the top port of your ethanol content sensor. Now we're going to install the low pressure fuel sensor onto the engine side of the fuel line. Again, be careful there might be some fuel left over in the lines. Next, we can route and install the remaining fuel line as shown and then attach it to the other port of the ethanol content sensor. With that installed, we can plug in the fuel sensor harness and attach it to the gateway module. Next, find your gateway to vehicle harness and plug it into the remaining port of your gateway module 
and then route it as shown so that the harness goes underneath of the car. From underneath the car, remove the grommet around the AC drain hose and then insert the gateway to vehicle harness. Once that's done, reinstall the grommet and secure it with some zip ties so that it stays away from the CV axle. Hopping in the car, start by removing this trim piece on the end of the passenger side dashboard. Then pull gently on the upper dash trim and remove it from the car. Remove the two screws by the air vent and then you can remove the trim around the screen. Once you pull that out, you will find there's an electrical plug on the back side, so make sure you disconnect that. With that out of the way, we now have access to the four bolts that are holding in the display screen. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove them. Now you should be able to pull out the screen and access the wiring connections on the back. If you need to, take a picture with your phone so you remember where everything goes. Then disconnect the plugs that are attached to the display screen. Now we finally have access to the little black module which is what we're after. Remove the two screws that are securing it in place and disconnect the plugs so that we can remove it from the car. Install some 3M on the back of the module or you can use the provided pad to reduce the vibrations. Now take Cobb's module and install it with the provided strap and hardware. Locate your bypass wiring harness and plug it into the back side of the Cobb module and then plug the big white connector into the front side of your stock module. Once that's done, secure everything with a zip tie. At this point, we can plug everything back in and reinstall the CAN module to the car. On the passenger side of the car, peel back the carpet and locate the CAN harness that we previously routed through the firewall. Once you locate the wiring harness, route it up behind the center console. Locate the harness that we just routed behind the center console and install it into the remaining port of the bypass module. And congratulations, you're pretty much done installing the Cobb Flex Fuel Kit. Now we can put everything back together. So in addition to installing Cobb's Flex Fuel Kit, we've also got their front mount intercooler, which I'm super excited that we're finally getting a front mount on our VB WX. The last time we were on the dyno, we were seeing heat soak issues with the top mount intercooler, and that's just due to the fact that it's packaged in the engine bay. So by moving the intercooler to the front of the car, we're gonna get a lot cooler air and colder charge temps, which should help us make some more power. As you can tell, Cobb's done some pretty interesting stuff with their design of this intercooler because both the inlet and the outlet are on the same side, and they say that's for more efficient packaging. Speaking of packaging, you are gonna have to change your factory crash beams, so they do provide a new support bar. With that said though, let's go ahead and see how it fits. Start by jacking your car up in the air and removing the splash guard underneath of it. Next, we're gonna remove the radiator fan to give us some room to access the charge pipe. We're not gonna go into all the specifics of how to remove a front bumper, but there is a fair amount of hardware on top as well as the wheel wells and underneath, so make sure you get it all removed and grab a friend to help you out. Detach the harness for the ambient air temp sensor. Remove the pop clips that are securing this rubber trim and set it out of the way. Next, we're gonna remove the factory crash beam. There are four bolts securing it on either side. Underneath the passenger headlight, there is a small metal brace. Remove the two nuts that are securing it and set it out of the way. Now we can install Cobb's intercooler brackets using the provided hardware. There are three bolts on either side that secure it. Mark holes along the top side of the air guides where you're gonna need to drill. And there's also a large hole that you're gonna need to drill on the passenger side for the charge pipe. Now we can install our Cobb intercooler using the four M8 bolts on either side to secure it. Start them by hand and then tighten them until they're snug. Install the rubber bushings onto the intercooler pipes and then insert their metal fittings. 
Using a 12 millimeter socket, remove the support bracket near the front of the engine by the cam position sensors. Next, swap the rubber O-ring from your charge piping to the intercooler pipe adapter. Now we can install this piping onto the turbo outlet and install the retaining clip onto the bracket of the pipe. Now we can reinstall the 12 millimeter bolt to secure the piping. Swap the O-ring from your stock intercooler to the throttle body adapter. Unbolt the four bolts securing your throttle body and remove the stock intercooler bracket. Then you can reinstall the Cobb throttle body adapter using the provided hardware. Locate your 80 degree coupler and install it facing down on the top of the front mount intercooler using a hose clamp. Repeat this process on the bottom with the slightly angled coupler and again secure it using a hose clamp. Now we can install the hot side piping and tighten down the hose clamp. Find the coupler with the big elbow in it and install it from on top of the engine bay. Then hopping underneath of the car, we can install this coupler to the piping and secure the hose clamps. Locate your cold pipe and install the coupler as shown. Then you can slide it into place and secure it. We've got two more couplers to install. One goes on the other side of the cold pipe that we just installed and the other one goes on the throttle body. Now we can install the piping to the throttle body, slide it into the couplers and secure it with the worm clamps. And once that's done, you can mount it to the intake manifold using the provided hardware. Install your replacement crash bar and reuse your OEM hardware. Last but not least, install the remaining cold side piping to the intercooler. So one more upgrade we're going to be making to the Deborah X is we're switching out our intake to this Cobb Redline carbon fiber intake scoop here. And we've also got their drop in high flow panel filter. Two reasons why we want to install this setup. One is it's completely emissions compliant and carb approved and two, this fits with our front mount intercooler. So if you are gonna run a Cobb front mount, make sure that your intake is compatible. A couple more steps to go, slide the intake piping into the silicone coupler and tighten it down with the worm clamp. I'm not gonna go over all the steps for installing your Cobb intake since there's already plenty of resources available online, but as you can see, the turbo inlet fit very snug to the intercooler piping, which is why you need to get a specific intake that is compatible with your Cobb front mount, so keep that in mind. The quality of the Cobb intake is spot on as always and the drop and panel filter fit great and the Redline carbon fiber scoop really sets off our engine bay. Well at this point pretty much all that's left is to flash your access port with your new tune for flex fuel. Like I said in the beginning of the video you can either go with an off the shelf tune or you can get your car pro tuned. It really just depends what you're after. In the next video, we're going to be putting our WRX on the dyno and getting a pro tune. So stay tuned for that. It's definitely going to be a cool video and we're going to show you the power gains that we got from installing Cobb's flex fuel kit. It's going to be a really good one and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of that. With that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.